lot of you have been wondering why we're doing all this work. I keep making references to cabin this and cabin that. So today's the day to show you our cabin. It's been a whole lot of fun, a whole lot of learning and education. But in the end, I believe it'll be worth it all. So here we go. So this is what it used to look like. This was circa 2013. It had a porch on it. It had a little outhouse built on the back of it. The property had a little small pond out there. Let me tell you a story about our cabin here. I haven't really gone into much detail about it. But back in 2012, back in 2012, we had an opportunity to buy this place. It's right beside my folks' house. And I had always fantasized about having a cabin as a kid. So we jumped on it. And uh, it's been a pretty good adventure so far. So my wife was at the library one day doing something. We don't remember what. But she came across a little eight or 12 sentence article about this cabin. Apparently in the 1920s, there was a Judge Moore that got his judgeship here in Burke County. And this was his home place back in Johnson City, Tennessee. So when he got his judgeship, he packed the cabin up, moved it down here and set it up in this location. A pretty good story about it. When I was growing up here on this side of the mountain as a kid, this place was empty a lot of times. Every now and then some family would move into it um, of the owner, the owner's family. But for the most part, it stayed pretty vacant. There was a big pond out here in the front yard. So as a kid, I would come out here and play in the pond, fish in the pond, and wouldn't be able to play inside the cabin, but certainly spent a lot of time outside of the cabin looking at it, admiring it, and waiting for the day till it became mine. It took about a year and a half to gather all the wood we needed. Dad and I took out a loader, went out in the woods, cut down a whole bunch of white pine, drug them all down to the landing, got them delimbed, bucked up into the right lengths, debarked them, and we started processing the wood. We had an old Alaskan mill, Alaskan saw mill, that we used that worked really well. I even had Mama and my wife out there helping, running chainsaws. We had so many people stop by and watch. I had to build a spectator bench for them. So here's our logs. This is probably a year and a half's worth of work. We logged these things off of the property here. Bunch of white pine, because we got plenty of white pine. Cut them up probably seven or eight years ago, so they've been laying underneath this shed drying. Range it from 18 feet long down to about, uh, I think we got some five and six footers in here based off of a design that I drew a decade ago. Because we want to have enough logs to replace the ones that are damaged, but then we also wanted to add an addition onto the back of the cabin with the logs. When we put all these things in here, I treated them pretty heavily with an insecticide, but over the years that's probably worn off. I'd say 10 years might be asking a little too much out of that product, so we've got some powder post beetles or something of that nature that's coming in here and the yellow jackets and wasp are coming in here and eating some of this stuff it's a two-story cabin but the way the roof is pitched and the lack of height to the second story the corners of the rooms there where the roof comes down is pretty close to the floor probably four or five feet we'll see if we can get up there if the stairs will allow us and take a look at it. Almost all the corners are bad and almost all of the bottom seal plates, I guess you would call them, are bad also. Uh, you can see this thing was just erected on some concrete block, no foundation at all. We've got a couple logs that are a couple courses off the ground. They're in pretty bad shape. 
we should be able to salvage these. The interior of the wood is pretty sound. See if we can get in here and shine a little light on it, let you see what that looks like in there. But the interior of these should be pretty sound, just the exterior. We may be able to replace, uh, repair these. If not, we'll use the log in another capacity. On this side of the house, we've got a fantastic chimney. It's already developed a crack where this thing has started leaning. It's our hope that we can salvage this fireplace when we disassemble the cabin. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet, but we're gonna try. Because the cabin will get taken down. The cabin will get taken down and we're gonna move it about 30 or 40 feet down the hill here, unless I can get the mountainside behind us logged because I feel like there's some pretty good spots for a cabin up there. Ideally, that's where I'd rather be, where I can get lots of sunshine, preserve everything. I've called a couple loggers. Nobody's really showed any interest in it. It's only a small seven acre partial, but I'll find one that will. Now we're on the other side of the chimney. Several of these logs are pretty infested have been eaten up over the years. But these are all short logs. Should be able to repair them pretty easily or replace if we have to. The notches are still in really good shape. We come around here to the back side of the house. There used to be an addition back here that covered all this. You can see the remnants of the bathroom over there on the left. And then of course in the middle here, we've got quite a bit of sagging taking place. This is probably the worst set of notches that we've got. Got several of these that have deteriorated because this is where the addition wall joined and it was poorly sealed. That's one reason why we ripped this addition off the back here is to allow some air to get to this and help dry it out rather than to continue and accumulate moisture behind that wall. All the other notches look really good. Here we are inside the cabin. When we bought it, it had a floor, but it was in such bad shape, I ripped it out just so I could get an idea, a little better idea of what I was working with. The whole fireplace foundation's pretty rough. They just stacked some block in here and then built the brick on top of it. Now this stone on the inside it did not come from here. This is some sort of manufactured stone, I believe. But it does still have a nice hearth on top of it, or mantelpiece. So we're going to save that, definitely reuse it. The place came with some souvenirs also. Got an old antique hand washing station here, or machine, I should say. Can't really make this out other than it says Home Company hand washing station. It all looks to be intact. Pretty neat. It also came with a high chair, complete with the tray. All the joints look to be in pretty good shape. And it's one of my wife's favorite characters, Winnie the Pooh. We've also got some cast iron spatulas. I think they're more of a novelty item than an actual useful item, but they're pretty neat. A terrible electrical work here. Quite a bit of damage to the log. All that can be repaired. It looks like they attempted to do some repairs here before with some sort of putty.
Here's our stairs going up to the uh, second floor. We're going to give these a try, see what they look like. I haven't climbed these stairs in quite some time. Still feel pretty solid. Oh yeah. So a couple years ago, we came up here and ripped out all the walls. This place was partitioned into three rooms, three tiny rooms. So we ripped it all out just to make it more open, help air circulate. And I wanted to see what I had. On the insides, you can still see hue marks. A lot of them are weathered pretty badly on the outside, but in here, you can still see them really well. Fine craftsmanship back then. And the downstairs ceiling, what I'm going to assume to be the original floor joist have been covered up with some trim boards. It looks pretty good. And the paneling or bead board of some sort that they've used in the ceiling also looks pretty nice and appears to have stood up pretty well. We're going to attempt to reuse every bit of that that we possibly can. The ultimate goal here is to get moved in on this property, sell our house right now, of course. But in order to get moved in, we got to get the camper in here. To do that, we'll need a bridge. Then we'll need a carport for the camper. Then we need a septic tank for the camper. Then we need some sort of water source for the cabin and the camper. And then hopefully we can get the place logged. Once we get it logged, we can find the, the ideal spot to rebuild the cabin it's always something but until next time be well my friends